Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. I was thinking of what kind of video I wanted to film and I just got inspired by, I was literally like filming another video and I was just kind of rambling and then I got the idea for this one. So <laughs> this video is gonna be all about my, my personal experience reading um, in metaphysical or crystal shops. And just kind of like to give you guys an idea of what what you are going to be experiencing or um, maybe some tips for you to help you out if this is something that you were thinking of doing for yourself. So um, I read for two different metaphysical shops, um, one at the end of 2006, 2016, oh my God, 2006. One at the end of 2016, it was like November, December, that time. Um, <clears throat> and then I read for another metaphysical shop for a whole year, all of 2017. So um, my experiences, um, and this is basically like going into this in 2016, I had already been reading tarot um, for four years. I started learning the cards in 2012. Um, so four years I was reading cards and I had already been reading for people, um, in my own private, like my own personal business online, doing online readings. I was doing a lot of like email PDF readings and, um, things like that. So, but <laughs> reading for a shop pushed me to be more comfortable reading for people in person. Um, so I would say, that that experience was probably the best experience for me to push myself to trust myself to read for people face to face um the first shop i read for i was only there for a month i did not like the energy of the shop um the people that worked there uh, they were very nice but they had a different side to them um the etiquette with the way they would do readings they wanted it done a specific way so i wasn't allowed to read my cards the way i would normally approach it i had to read my cards the way the shop owner wanted them to be read and they want she wanted them read similar to the way she conducted her readings um so first tip or warning <laughs> for anyone who is thinking about reading in a shop um you are under, you are pretty much employed by the owner of that shop. And if the owner of the shop wants you to read a certain way, they are going to request that of you. Um, so I didn't know that going into this. Um, I had never read for someone's shop before. And so I found myself very uncomfortable with the fact that this, um, this shop owner wanted me to do the readings a certain way. So I remember like I was practicing, <laughs> I was doing like practice readings um, to get myself comfortable with her reading style and the way she wanted it done was, I mean, she wanted you to tap into everything. Um, health was one thing that I was not comfortable reading for. Um, she wanted you to read for their health and it, to me, the way I read, if you guys were to look at my website, my code of ethics, um, I do not do health related readings. I am not a doctor. I don't want to do any kind of um, readings that would be along the lines of, of a doctor consultation. That is not what I do. So that was the first red flag for me with that shop. <laughs> and after a couple of times, I just was so uncomfortable. Um, I remember I even just stopped reading the way she wanted it to be done after she was, cause like for the first couple sessions, she would kind of hover around <laughs> to see if the clients were happy with the way I was performing. Um, and it was very uncomfortable. It made me feel like I was some kind of a, uh, just some entertain source of entertainment, you know, like just, I don't know. It just felt really weird. I felt like a, a circus person, you know, like just performing for the sake of everyone else. And the whole, like the integrity of the reading was compromised at times because I was so focused on trying to perform the way she wanted it done that I wasn't tapping into my, my own way. And so didn't like that. Um, and I ended up not going back. I didn't show up. <laughs> I didn't show up and I, I sent her a very vague email just 
kind of giving her bullshit reason why I wasn't going to be you be able to read for her anymore. And I didn't pick up my last check. So I left that as a donation to her store. <laughs> um, that's how mortified I was of that experience. It was very negative to me and it was very emotional. I remember I cried about it to my husband um, because I felt so bad. I felt like I was being a bad person by compromising the readings for the sake of the way that this woman wanted it to be read. And so I just, it was not... It was not a positive experience at all. Um, and to this day, I've never stepped foot into that shop again. So <laughs> it's just not, it was not my piece of, not my piece of the pie. Um, the second shop I read for was a really, really amazing experience. I loved the owner. She was amazing. She was actually a really good spiritual mentor to me. Um, I attended the, um, some of the meditation classes that she would host though. It was just so powerful to sit in a circle with other people and just meditating for like, I think we would meditate for an hour to two hours, kid you not. Um, and it was just freaking amazing. Like my mediumship leveled up from her, from her mediumship, um, from her meditation classes and from the psychic medium class that I took, um, in her shop. And so she has a medium um, that taught a psychic class, um, like it was like a psychic development class and it was just pretty much like intro to mediumship and I freaking leveled up <laughs> in that class. And so my experience from her shop was so much more, much more positive. Um, and, <laughs> and she only took a small, she took a smaller cut from my pay. So the first shop, um, this is like another thing for you guys. Sorry, this is so jumbled. I'm just rambling. Um, when you read for someone's shop, chances are you could set your own prices, but it depends. Sometimes the shop will have specific prices already set. So the first shop I read for, they had specific prices already um, set up. So it was like $85, I think, for an hour. I think it was like 50 something or I don't know for half an hour I don't really remember and they took 50% so if I was doing you know a $50 reading that day I only made 25 bucks off of that reading um, and I would keep my tips but she took a percentage of the tips as well so um, that was kind of like if you weren't doing any readings that day you didn't make any money um, and <laughs> just the 50% taken out of your reading was it was it was crazy it was like you could be in a session for an hour with a client and you realize you're only getting paid a half an hour's worth of wages so it's it's a little tough um that's got to be like one of the biggest reasons why <laughs> I decided not to read for shops anymore. Um, the second shop I read for, she only took 35% out and um, she let you keep your entire tip. So that was nice. Um, and I started teaching tarot classes in that shop too. So that was really cool. I think the tarot classes, like any, when you had a tarot course, she was taking 40% out. So you, that's the other thing is like, if you're reading for shops, get ready to have a portion of your money made come out. You're not going to get 100% of it. No. <laughs> um, they make the appointments for you. Um, so I had like a set schedule at the shops. I was there like certain days out of the week, certain hours, and then whoever would come in, if they wanted a walk-in reading, we would do readings. Um, sometimes they would they would set the appointments for me ahead of time. So I would I would show up for the for the day and they would say, okay, Rose, you have two appointments at this time. Anyone who walks in and wants a reading in between that, you could do it. Um, I did a lot of like quick 15 minute readings. The, the, those were like the most cheapest um, readings that we offered. So I did a lot of those. Um, and I want to say that experience helped me. It taught me one, it taught me to be comfortable reading for people in person big one um the experience also taught me how to time manage myself <laughs> so but at the time when I was reading in those shops I was doing um email readings I wasn't even doing these video readings that I do now and so I was only used to you know typing on the computer and I wouldn't realize how much of my time my personal time was going into typing those email readings when I'm reading for people in the shop you're timed because that person is only paying for a certain amount of time block 
for you with you. So you don't want to go overtime. Otherwise, you have to have that uncomfortable conversation where it's like, oh, well, we went 15 minutes up. So it's going to be like another $25 or whatever. <laughs> Half the time, you know, they're more they're more than welcome to um, they're more than willing to pay. But sometimes you'll get those people who don't want to pay extra. Um, so you, I had to get comfortable with okay, the, the reading is done, you know, like getting into my groove of how do I, how do I end the reading so that this person knows it's done and I'm not pulling cards anymore. So, um, that was another thing that it taught me how to do that. It taught me to be more, be more comfortable and be more upfront with people about their, their reading. <laughs> I learned how to engage with the client. I learned how to ask questions or allow the client to talk while I shuffled. Um, so I want to say I really increased my reading style, just kind of became what it was um, throughout that experience, that whole year that I read in the shop. Um, I did have some clients who would come back for me. <laughs> so that was always fun because you would see like maybe once a month a, a person would come in and they would they would specifically request a reading with you. So that's always a good feeling because you knew that you made that connection with that person. Um, and then I also experienced those, those people who would just throw out shitty questions over and over and over again, not paying attention to what you're telling them. They just want to know yes, no, yes, no. So that was another lesson I learned was, um, the yes, no questions, <laughs> how to read for that and just get it over with. Um, so reading in a shop, you're going to get, you're going to get those, those clients who, um, are skeptics. You're going to get the clients who are asking the yes, no questions. You're going to get the clients who are testing you. They want to know how much you know about them versus the whole point of the reading, which is, you know, you're reading for a specific question or whatnot. So it's just kind of like you're going to get a whole different experience. Um, a lot of times like my my online clients were more so more in depth questions versus the shallow questions that I was receiving from these in person readings with people who don't really have much of an experience with getting a card reading done in the first place. So you have some people who you have some people who treat their tarot reading sense, um, session as a therapy session. And I love those. I, I actually, that's what I want to do. It's like spiritual therapy. That's what I want to do. <laughs> but then you'll get those people who will pay for a reading who are, what does so-and-so think of me? What does so-and-so want? Why do they leave me? How come they're cheating on me? Are they cheating on me? How many people do they sleep with right now? Like you're at, you're, you're being asked questions like that and you're just kind of like, oh, this isn't really, <laughs> you're not the kind of client I would usually go for. But because you were reading in someone else's shop, um, you have to do the reading unless you say, I can't take this client. I know how they are. I don't align with their readings or whatnot. But for the most part, if a, someone walks into that shop and they want a reading, you are expected to do the reading for them. So that was like another thing with reading in shops that I wasn't very fond of um, because <clears throat> you can't really say no and let me refund you your money kind of thing, you know, like that the shop owner wants to make their money. Um, so after a while, like after a while of reading in someone else's shop and having a portion of my money, <laughs> like my time taken from me, um, you know, I understand the shop needs to make their money and whatnot, but after a while it got to me, it, it made me feel, God, I, this person's paying like a hundred dollars to sit with me for an hour. I should be able to keep all of that. <laughs> So like after a while, it really like started making me think if I just push myself to do this on my own time, I could be making this money and keeping it and it would all be mine because it's my own business. So that's where my head kind of went after a while. I started to realize I don't want to read for someone else's business. I want to read for my own business. And so um, towards the end of 2017, I started to taper away, like I started to disconnect um, from reading in the shop. And, and then other stuff happened with my personal life, with my day job. And I couldn't fit 
the shop in the schedule anymore. So I left and I haven't gone back. I haven't read for any shops since. Um, I've solely been focusing on TCM, just me. And I don't have any desire to read for someone else's shop ever again. Um, I feel like the experience was worth it. I do. I feel like it taught me stuff. It helped me. <laughs> it definitely helped me step outside of my comfort zone with reading in person. Um, but I do prefer being in control of my own, who I book readings with, do I want to read for you again kind of thing. Um, I like to be in more control of my reading style and definitely I like to see 100% of the, the money made coming to me. So that's just my little insight for you guys of my experience working in the shops. Um, if you guys have any questions or you have, you know, anything you would like to add or ask, um, comment below. <laughs> and I would like to hear what you have to say. Um, otherwise, thank you guys for tuning in and I will talk to you soon. Bye, my loves.